What's up, y'all? My name is Alan Sheriff, aka Alan, the Sheriff of all things innovative, and this is the ATS Podcast. Here on the ATS Podcast, we talk about all things science, technology, and psychology related, and it's my hope that I'm making the world a better place, one new episode at a time. Let's get into it. The first subject is science. Now, I read an article from Science Daily, and it talks about progressive mechanoporation, a new process making it possible to mechanically disrupt the membranes of cells for a short time period and to let drugs or genes inside the cells. Now, hilariously, I read this title so wrong. <laughs> like, I was thinking to myself, yo, did the drug trade really step up their like game? Like, are they really smuggling drugs across states now using people and, and putting them in people's cells? Like, geez, Louise. <laughs> I just saw the word smuggling and it has a negative connotation associated with that. I was like, oh no. <laughs> But then I realized, no, no, nah, they could never do this. This is this is just, this is just. Oh man, that would be a new whole new level of just wrong. But nah, like I'm I'm so glad that it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> as soon as I started reading, anyway, the uh, the article points out that a team of scientists from Erlangen, Dresden, and London have now developed a completely new method to very efficiently deliver not only genes but also drugs and other substances into cells. They built a special polymer chip that contains a series of microchannels with which you can pass up to 10,000 cells through them, creating pores, allowing molecules and other proteins to easily pass through. The team hopes that in the future, hospitals will be able to use this method when treating patient cells. And I very much hope for that too. The first thing that came to my mind when I read this article was, I really hope that in some kind of way this rep this improves the relationship between the healthcare industry and the communities that they help with. I mean, we've seen all over the world how much this pandemic has impacted, you know, the healthcare industry, and we've just seen in general across <clears throat> across decades decades how difficult it's been for the healthcare industry to be able to. Um, render its services to individuals who come in looking for help. You know, we, we have people who have to sit for long waiting times, people who may not necessarily have um, uh, access to a hospital bed, you know, just because they're just standing there and waiting there. And sometimes the methods are inefficient and the whole process is extremely ineffective. But I think innovations like these have the potential to drastically change the relationship between the healthcare industry and these communities. Because if you think about the fact that if you think about the fact that innovations like these will help not only could possibly not only help improve the recovery process, but speed up the recovery process, making it a lot easier for people to come in and out and in and out and overall just um, improving the whole process. You'll start having healthier communities that can be a lot more productive and can, you know, uh, you can also have communities that will help build more trust with their uh, healthcare systems. But um, this all comes with time, you know, obviously. It's not just this one in in innovation that's going to impact the entire healthcare industry. Everything takes time. I just think the innovations like these, the more you continue to develop them out, uh, the better the relationship can become between the community and the healthcare industry because it's really bad. The relationships are really bad right now. And um, <clears throat> I just hope innovations like this continue to be developed out because it could be very beneficial. And the next subject is technology. Now, I read another article from Science Alert, and it talks about the U.S. government that has issued the final federal approval for the Vineyard Wind Project, a utility-scale wind farm that has been over a decade in the planning. Why the heck has it been over a decade in the planning? <laughs> like, you see people constantly calling out, climate change is real, climate change is real, do something about it, and you're just like, eh. Yeah, let's let's wait for, you know, a, d a decade or so and then we'll give them this. Like <laughs> I hate that so much. I hate that with a passion. That really sucks. Anyway, the article points out the wind farm developers plan to install 62 giant turbines in the Atlantic Ocean about 15 miles off Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, with enough capacity to power 400,000 homes with clean energy. It's all part of the Biden administration's goal of investing more into offshore wind and accelerating the federal review process. And it also talks about some of the things that need to get done during the federal review process. It talks about how large, how a large number of state and environmental coastal agencies also have to approve offshore wind farm farm plans and that construction can take anywhere from six to seven years or more. I mean, look, I know that these processes generally take a lot longer and I don't have an experience in understanding how 
long these processes it takes and, and what's conducted and what's done. But all I know is that at this point, with regards to how climate change is treating society, listen, we need to fast track these federal approval processes. We need to, there's no reason not to be able to take action rather than inaction because we see the destruction going on in our world. Like, I'm starting to feel like a rapper. Like, <laughs> I think that was bars right there. <laughs> but anyway, no, like, I think that it's extremely important to recognize that we shouldn't let something as simple as, oh, we don't know how this is going to affect the community or we don't know how this is. We, we just don't know. We just don't know. I don't think that that mindset should continue slowing us down from taking risks. You know, I think that things need to get done. And so more important than anything, the more important what can be taken from this article is that these federal these federal approval processes need to be fast tracked. You know, it just shouldn't take a decade. And given the impact that climate change is having on all of us, I just I just think it would do us more good than harm. In all honesty, I mean, look, Greta Greta Thunberg said it best. I want y'all to panic. <laughs> like I want y'all to start getting real out here. You know what I mean? I know that the only issue I'm seeing at this point is, you know the impact that it can have on the environment. I understand that. But at the same time, look at what's already happening to the world. You know, so what's the point of, you know, just taking more risks? Like, I just, anyway. Yeah, I, look, lesson to be learned from this article. Don't let your short-term view narrow a long-term view of a brighter future. You know, at least have hope for it. You know, try to be a lot more optimistic because the more optimistic you are, the more optimistic I can be. I mean, the more optimistic I am, the more optimistic you can continue to uh, grow in. So look, yeah, let's trade back and forth. <laughs> the last subject is psychology. And I read an article from Neuroscience and it talks about how research teams have created a new brain computer interface or BCI in combination with a machine learning algorithm that can generate words on a screen based on a person thinking about writing the word. If I ever wanted to participate in this thing, I would just, I would fail immediately because <laughs> the only thing that comes into my head is typing. I don't think about writing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> if I say something in my head right now, like that man went to Mars, like it's just being typed in my head. There's no handwriting. I'm a lost soul. <laughs> Somebody come help me. Anyway, the article points out the scientists have developed a brain computer interface designed to restore the ability to communicate in people with spinal cord in injuries and neurological disorders. Researchers focused on the part of the brain that is responsible for fine movement and recorded the signals participants participants generated from attempting to write the letters by hand. They then used a machine learning algorithm to identify patterns between letters and neural patterns. Though displayed as a proof of concept, this system appears to be more accurate and more efficient than existing communication BCIs and can help people with paralysis rapidly type without needing to use their hands. Just off the top of my head, I think that an innovation like this has the potential to dramatically change the educational system as well. I mean, I feel like there's certain physical functions in the educational system, such as raising your hand, that could be bypassed now with technology like this. I mean, I think about telepathy. I think about how easier it will become for people to have communications with people who haven't had uh, the ability to communicate, you know, through <clears throat> through certain types of expressions. And so with innovations like these, you'll have people who have certain neurological disorders or spinal cord industries who've had uh, trouble communicating in the past. They'll now be able to communicate with innovations like these, and it could drastically change various different spaces. And I always look at the philosophy of these things. I think it's beautiful. I think that the more we continue to communicate and develop out this innovation and communicate with people who've never had the opportunity to share a space with us before, bring their own ideas, their own their own passions, their own um, <clears throat> any type of thing that could potentially change the world, their own ideas, their own solutions. If we bring those people to the table, you'll see the world advance like very, very quickly. You know what I mean? And, I, and for me, again, it's just the philosophy of this all. So I really think this is awesome. I hope this continues to be developed out. Machine learning is incredible. AI is incredible. Let's continue trying to build this out. This is awesome. Um, I'm sure it's going to do us a lot of good in the future. Anyway, closing remarks. Um, look, everybody, make sure that you go out there and and donate. You know, uh, a wind blade to the U.S. government. It's happening. The wind farms are happening. 
<laughs> I'm not sure how much a wind blade costs anyway. What am I saying? All right. Well, if you can't donate a wind blade, then donate a fan blade, you know, so we can cool down the East Coast because <laughs> they need to build a fan farm. That's what they need. Because when climate change, when climate change makes it a whole lot harder, hotter over here, man, I'm going to tell you, we're going to need a lot of fans. <laughs> You're just going to see people stepping outside their houses going, oh, <laughs> I love the breeze against my face. <laughs> that's not the breeze. That's Johnny's fart. Anyway, thank you so much for checking into the ATS podcast, y'all. I really appreciate it. This is really awesome. I love doing this. Um, make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell for notifications. And also, if you're listening to this on any of my podcast hosting sites, make sure you either hit that follow or subscribe button. And lastly... <clears throat> If you have the chance, go to alantheshareup.com and check out some of my merch or make sure you hit that $2 subscription button, get early access to all of my content, or you can hit that $5 subscription button to get exclusive access to certain pieces of content I do not share on my platforms. Remember that a certain portion of these, um, a certain portion of uh, these proceeds will be going to climate action organizations. So remember, I'll start leaving those organizations in the description below. I really hope that um, you check my website out. I really hope that uh, I continue to make more videos like you in the future. And it's you who's helping me build a bigger and brighter future for all of us. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for checking out my episode. And I hope that all of you will see me in my next episode of the ATS Podcast. Keep on watching and keep on enjoying. Ah!